Danae Johnson hanging out with Halsey. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you guys for having me. I'm really excited to be here. It's yeah. a really exciting day. We are the new Americana. Now you just had some massive news. Madison Square Gardens. Can you tell us a little bit about this? Yeah, so we, um, I'm, I'm on the Badlands tour right now, which is the tour cycle for my uh, my album. And you know, we just did the US and Canada run. And then we're going to Australia, Japan, Europe, South America, UK, doing the rest of the world. And when we come back, we're going to end it all and close it all out at Madison Square Garden. And this morning I found out that the show sold out. Sold so out. that's really, really cool. That's crazy. And you and I were just talking about the fact that you've really only been doing this for about a year, year and a half. Like your yeah. album just came out this year. Yeah, my album just came out two months ago. So I'm I'm definitely, um, definitely still a baby at this. Um, How are you already selling out Madison Square Garden? That's the question I'm asking <laughs> to everyone. You know, it's one of those things when we, we put the show up and I was kind of like, are you sure we want to do this? Are you sure? Are you sure this is what we want to do? Because if this doesn't end well, I'm going to be really mad at you guys. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> and everyone was kind of like, we think we think that they can do it. Do you think they can do it? And I was like, you know what? I do. Because wow. our shows were selling out so quickly and fans kept being like, play bigger venues. We can't get tickets. And I was like, well, I'm playing the size venues I think I'm supposed to be playing. You guys just keep surprising me. Um, so we put a mass square garden. We put it up way in advance because we were nervous. Like admittedly, like we were nervous. So we put it up, you know, um, about three weeks ago. And um, the show's not until August. Yeah. So we were hoping, all right, give it like 10 months. <laughs> Maybe we'll sell enough tickets. Oh, God. And then it sold out in three weeks. And I don't really know what to say. And everyone kind of, you know, there's like the haters out there that are like, how could you sell out Madison Square Garden? I'm like, I have no idea. I don't know how. But I she did it. I don't haters. know how. Yes. Yeah. That's so, so it's, awesome. It's really, really, really exciting. Yeah, that's mind blowing. Especially, I, I I know you are a huge fan of New York, so I would imagine that is an um, amazing accomplishment to sell out like the venue in New York. Yeah, I mean, I spent my whole childhood going to see shows there. Most yeah. recently, I mean, the last show that I saw there was Ed Sheeran a couple of years ago. He's incredible. Um, yeah, live performance. Yeah, he's super amazing. incredible. But you know, that guy's larger than life to me. He's yeah. a massive, massive superstar. So, you know. To be, you know, playing the venue where I watched him shut up an entire arena of people with an acoustic guitar yeah. is like, you know, mind blowing. My show is probably going to have a lot more fire than his um, <laughs> and explosions yeah, and confetti. Like but um, yeah, it's you're kind of badass like that. We we tend to bring bring the heat and bring the weirdness. Like we're doing I a like club it. tour right now, and our like production is is insane. It's like really ridiculous. Like we have like <laughs> confetti and CO two and these video walls and these oh crazy gosh. lights. And I'm like jumping around. I broke like three knuckles on stage last night. Um, <laughs> I don't think people really expect my show to be quite as punk rock as it is. Mm -hmm. um, but it's definitely. I mean, I go in the crowd every night. Um, That's awesome. So it's it's definitely exciting. Don't know if I'm gonna be able to go in the crowd at Madison Square Garden, but we'll work something yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe pull like a Bieber and fly over everyone. Okay, let's talk about Bieber for a moment. Speaking of, yeah. Okay, so you are featured on his new album. All right, I am indeed. How did this all come about? Tell us about this. So, um, well, Bieber told me that he was online, like looking through my videos. He's in love with you. Can we just say? I think <laughs> I think there's something going on with you. <laughs> The video that he posted today, like saying that you're hot. He said, yeah, they sent me that video and I was like, what is going on? What is this? Are you guys dating? Is, is this, is this we, a thing? We are, Justin and I are not, are not dating. Um, I don't think I'd be able to handle breaking the hearts of millions of little girls. That so would be a lot. Dating Justin Bieber is a really heavy responsibility. Um, but, you know, I... I feel so I feel so awkward now. Um, I mean, if you asked me when I was sixteen if I was dating Justin Bieber, I probably would have been like, "Yeah, of course." Heck um, yes! But now it's day. like kind of like real deal. Yeah. Okay, so how did it come about you being featured on his album? Well, I guess he decided he was a fan and reached out to his manager Scooter and was like, "I want Halsey on the album." And Scooter called my team and was like, "We want Halsey on the album." And I was like. Where's the catch? Yeah. Like, where's the joke? Where's Ashton Kutcher? Where's the cameras? <laughs> like, who's pulling a mean prank on me right now? Because you have to think, like, you know, this is his comeback record, and there's such a such a heavy, heavy responsibility on that. So you have Justin Bieber sitting in a room somewhere, thinking to himself, I need to make this the best album that it can possibly be because I have so much to prove, and that means let's put Halsey on it. And I was like, 
what? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Like when he asked, I was genuinely thinking to myself, what conceivable benefit could you be getting from having me on your record? Wow. What could I be doing That's quite for you? Of you? But it's true, you know? Mm-hmm. And you know, I guess it just kind of came down to him liking my style and liking my voice. And I'm obviously a huge fan. So getting to do the collaboration was really exciting. And I think we surprised a lot of people. The fans really like it. But at first they were like, I don't get how your styles are going to match up. Hmm. I don't think it's going to make sense. I don't think you guys have the right style to do collaboration, blah, blah, blah. And then I think we found this balance between both of our styles um, that really, really came together harmoniously. Um, and I really like to think that we we did, you know, justice in the best way we could to both of our, both of our, you know, our styles, our genres, and, and wrote a song, and, and wrote, made a song, rather, that was, I think... My favorite song that I that What's that I've ever put again? out. It's called "The Feeling." The Feeling, yeah. Yeah, right. it's one of my favorite songs I've ever put out, honestly. Which is crazy because um, I'm really adamant about writing my own music, mm-hmm. and I did not write this song. Mm-hmm. Um, this song was kind of made. It almost seems like it was made for he and I. Like it was mm-hmm. made to be like the perfect kind of love story between between Justin and I. And one of the things I keep bringing up is the there's an Alanis Morissette reference in the ah. song. He says, jagged like a pill, so hard to swallow. Love that and album. As soon as I heard that, yeah. I was like, is this a song, a Justin Bieber song referencing Alanis Morissette? I need to be on this song. See, I guys, need to be on this song. You guys are soulmates. I, I'm telling you right now, future well, we'll marriage. We'll see. We're doing the Today Show in a couple <laughs> days together, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see the chemistry. Yeah, either that or awesome. we're just going to be total dorks in front of each other. Well, that's the thing. If you think somebody's cute and he's already admitted that he thinks you're cute, it's just going to be like, but it'll be cute, awkward. A lot of people think we look alike. A lot of people think that we look <laughs> like, really? yeah, a lot of people think we look like brother and sister. And at first mm. I was like, no. And then I saw some pictures and I was like, wait a second. There, you look like you could be related. Yeah, that's what a lot of people have it's been just, saying. Maybe it's just the short hair. Like I've seen you with I the longer so. hair. And, I think so. I think yeah. that he, I think I have something kind of androgynous and maybe a little bit masculine about me and something that I own, something that I'm not afraid of, you know, having something that's like a little bit boyish. And I think Justin likewise has something that's a little bit feminine about him, which he also owns. I don't know if you guys have seen that video of him walking around in high heels, no. but it's awesome. It's so yeah. great. Justin Check Bieber says, out. screw your fragile masculinity. I'm going to wear high heels. I like that. I'm down with that. We're here in Vancouver. I mean, we're all about that here. Absolutely. (laughs) Um, Okay, so you've got the thing going on with Bieber right now, and then you are going on tour with The Weeknd, a massive Canadian artist. Tell us about this. Well, it seems... It's dawning on me how much I love Canadian artists, yes. I guess. Yeah, um, yeah. Bieber which said, I'm yeah. starting to realize. Um, but yeah, uh, I leave with the weekend pretty soon. And I'm really, really excited because Abel has been like massively inspirational, you know, for me in, in my writing process and making records. And, and the fact that he makes songs that are about his life unapologetic, uh, unapologetically. Like, yes. He does not care if you can't relate to what he's singing about. Mm-hmm. If you can't relate to him being on a private jet and not seeing his house for months at a time and being with beautiful girls backstage somewhere, yeah. like whatever. Like, he tells it raw like, This is my life. This is what it's about. And when I was making Badlands, it was kind of like a similar scenario where some people said to me, you know, you have a, a demographic that ranges from kids that are 16 to people who are, you know, in their late 20s, even 30s, you know. And obviously that's just the main demographic. Anyone can like my music of any age. But... Um, a lot of people were like, are you worried about writing songs about being in love, about loss, about knowing people who have done drugs, knowing about you know people who have destroyed themselves in that way, about mental illness, about are you worried about writing about these topics that aren't necessarily universally relatable? And a big inspiration for me in saying, screw you, I'm going to write about my life was Abel, and, you know, because he's done that on all of his records. And so I'm really excited to go out with him. I got beef with him, though, oh, because oh, I snap. put out my record the same day as him. And if I put it out the week before or the week after, it would have been a number one but of course it had to be a number two uh, because I had to put out somebody as him but I will say that if there's anyone that I would it, there's no one that I'd rather be number two to than than Abel and but, that's pretty awesome the top two going yeah, on tour but next together. record I'm gunning for him <laughs> I'm gunning go. for him like, watch out, Abel. I got you next <laughs> album that's awesome so I was also reading that you're already working on your next album yes okay so that's what's next for you yeah, I was home. I was home for two days, like a couple a couple of days ago, um, and I spent like forty eight hours straight in the studio. Um, and I always say to myself, like, oh, I finished my album. I'm on tour. I don't have to write for a long time. I can relax and like I get an idea stuck in my brain, and I'm like, brain, why? Stop! I need to chill. And my brain's like, no, 
you need to write. And I'm like, brain. And my brain's like, write, go. And I'm like, fine. So then I find myself in a studio like 3 a.m. on my day off when like I just want to be hanging around. But sometimes you can't fight that, you know what I mean? And for me right now, it's about experimentation. It's about writing as many songs as I can right now so I can figure out what sound is going to work best for me on my next album. Because obviously I want to change it up. I don't want to put out, you know, the same thing that I've just put out. And I think about, I'm so proud of Badlands and I want to give it more time to live and to grow and for people to experience it and, you know, find find their way to, find their way to it, if you will, yeah. um, over the next year or so. And then, you know, once I feel like everybody's ready for the rest of the story, then I'll give them, I'll give them that record. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Okay, one last question. If you go on Halsey's Instagram, you will see you have got the craziest abs. You have like abs of steel. I'm not gonna make you show them. This but like, is like the nicest thing anyone's ever <laughs> said to me. I'm not kidding you. I'm like just like fangirling your photos like, girl, like how are you getting these abs? I, you know what's so funny is that until like a couple months ago, I, I would like never wear like a midriff shirt. Really? I would have been too like nervous. And then I started realizing that having my midriff exposed on stage kind of makes me move better. I don't know yeah. why. It's like a weird thing. Um, and I also stopped caring. Like, Good. first of all, touring is like incredibly athletic and incredibly like vigorous. So you lose a lot of weight without realizing it just because 72 minutes a night, I'm running around like a mad woman, <laughs> jumping around on things, breaking, breaking my fingers. knuckles. Yeah, <laughs> like, you know, jumping in the crowd, doing crazy stuff. Yeah. Um, so I started kind of like losing weight without realizing it. Um, and then it, for me, it came down to... You know, when I climb up on a riser or I, or I like kneel down from the crowd, like I squish, you know what yeah. I mean? Because I'm a person, like so I squish. Um, and it came down to like, you know, pictures Pictures were like coming out of me with like squish at the top of my jeans or whatever. Uh. And I would be like, and you know, at first I was kind of like, oh, I hate this. And then it kind of got to the point where I was like, I don't really care. Like I'm this person, I have skin, I have fat. Like yeah. I, I don't really care if those pictures come out. So I was just like, you know what? I'm rocking all midriffs and all like little tops on this next tour because they make me feel good. And like, that's that was like a big, big thing for me because you know, everyone has like their own like weird insecurities about their body. And for me, that was totally it. Um, so I feel a lot better about it now. Um, and um, also those abs did not come without a price because <laughs> I have also gone down like two bra sizes and have oh, wow. and no longer have a butt. So <laughs> that's that was the price that I paid for having um, this uh, the stomach that Fair I enough. supposedly have now. That looks good to me. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you again for coming. No, by. thank you guys for having me. Of course, anytime. She's Halsey. I'm Danae Johnson, and this is Virgin Radio. Thanks, guys. Ninety-four point five Virgin Radio. Vancouver's number one hit music station.